Alrighty, uh, we are continuing on on lab 0504 where we're ready to start working with a search interface. And so um, I pulled up an old lecture that we had when we were learning to do this on the back end. You know, we said that we were working forwards eventually. We were going to get to a place where we can have an interface similar to something like this where, you know, we can enter keywords. We've got maybe some drop down lists maybe some text boxes for input and kind of a button to search. And so this is, you know, I said, hey, someday we'll get here. Um, and, and certainly that's where we're at now is we have a front end and we're going to use that to kind of extract the information that the user wants to search for and how they want to search and how they want to sort and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and hit our back end that we built back here um, probably a month or so ago. Um, so this is, this is, you know, essentially what we're building. If we look at this lab, you know, there's a lot of different controls that will go into this, but probably where we're going to start today is the sort by. And the reason we're going to start that I'm going to choose this with a sort by says use a select field to pick a sort order. Um, we've got newest, is selected initially so I'll have to kind of figure that into the equation the required options are listed below and then we've got newest oldest title classification assigned to and created by so these are all field field properties of our bugs and I wanted to start here because well uh, Grant already has this drop-down list now this is not yet working um, but you can kind of see here on the front end uh, and hopefully everyone knows how to code a drop-down list, but let's just go ahead and look at it anyways on our front end on our, let me close this all down, user editor is what we did yesterday, nav bar, close down app and our bug item. Um, what we were looking at there is our user list and here is our user list component and you can see here, um, drop down menu, last name, first name role. Um, and I might, so this is probably in, let's see, div class name, drop down menu, drop down item. Um, I'm going to refactor this because I believe, you know, we, uh, well, just to meet the lab requirements, and Grant didn't have these when we were coding the front end, um, it doesn't look like it's using a select tag. So I'm going to refactor this to use a select tag and then options underneath that. So let's go to get bootstrap. And let's look at a select form control. Uh, so here we go. And kind of starting here with my select. And this isn't functioning at this point anyways. So uh, this is a button group. Let's see, sort by. I kind of like I kind of like this in the sense that uh, it's very clear that this is performing a sort. Um, and so, looking at the search interface we could have a select list with just a label that says sort by and it's going to effectively do the same thing. So that's kind of what I'm going to refactor this to is just a little label that says sort by. And there's my back end. So let's go here. Um, so this button here it says search results. And then right after that, everything in this div under that search results um, I'm probably going to delete 
and this could be not that I couldn't use what we already had not that I couldn't use that I think I could but I think it's you know the, the, the control that I'm honestly most familiar with is a select um, with options okay here now the lab says kind of by default your first selected um, should be I think it says use a select to pick a fit the option newest must be listed in the drop-down first listed in and selected initially um, so that kind of changes this um, if we want kind of a default option but let's say okay um, our value here is newest so newest and selected this will say title title so again, what you're seeing here, the user is seeing uh, what's in the option tag, and then using JavaScript, we access the value, right? So that's the difference. This is what the user sees, and then this is what the JavaScript will access. So we've got our options here, uh, our next option after title is classification. and assigned to and created by and so what I'm going to do is kind of very slowly piece this together one at a time and get it working piece by piece um, so if I go back to my front end and refresh, um, let me save my user list. Oh, I just did that on user list. Why'd I do that on your, well, let's cut. Cut it off of user list. And control Z to bring back my, what you had before, cause this is doing this on the wrong. Did you notice that I was doing that on the wrong thing? I didn't, no. You didn't? No. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I did it incorrect, you didn't catch my mistake that's all right bug list now we're going to delete the same div down to that div okay i'm going why isn't it um you know I'm going to put this in a I'm gonna 
have a label on top or somewhere nearby. This needs to be class name. So when you see anywhere where it says class, we're going to go to class name. Class name of form label. And ID is uh, select. So it's a select control selection sort, cell sort. Um, HTML4 cell sort. And now it is displaying flex, and therefore we're getting two children inside of our, well, we're getting. All of these are flex, so this div is a deflex. So doing a line break as such doesn't matter because we're still displaying flex. That's why my line break didn't take hold there. Um, maybe get rid of the deflex and I want to inspect and just see if I'm already inside of a row or what's going on, div, class, container. So I'm noticing I don't even really have any rows. So I'll go ahead and make a div, div class of row. And then this will be a div. And I'll wrap my label and my select tag inside of a div. Um, so there's my closing, so there's my row, and then I have an H3 inside of my row, and then I have a div, which will be my column. Class name is call medium devices four, so it'll be like a third of my row. And that just kind of tames this a little bit into uh, into a column. Um, okay, let's see see what else we can do. Um, I kind of liked how his looked like a button. You know, it was a drop down list, but it looked like a button, but he. He actually had a button tag on it. Um, so if I'm looking at the classes, we have the classes form select on our select tag. And then you can make it large or small. Form select large, form select small. Um, so on our select, class name of form select, I don't really care if it's large or small. But um, let's just make it sure, let's make it a large class of form select, form select large. I'm just curious if I say primary. I doubt that colors it like any sort of, no. Um, eh, form select large, form select small. Okay, we'll go small. And if I click the label, it focuses the control that that's working. Um, and so, what we need to do is we need to bring in a use state, and we're going to make a, a state variable for the value that is in the sort by. And so, we need a way to. 
here, store the const. Um, selected sort value. Um, so let me think of the, the, the variable here. Um, we'll call it sort value. Set sort value equals use state. And the default is kind of set for us of newest. So I'm going to say the sort value is set to newest. And that allows us to, on our select, we're going to set a value attribute on our select to the sort value. Now, I'm going to take off the selected by default the, on my option because when, when the thing loads we set state to be newest and then we set the value of our select here to the sort value and oh by the way it is still okay uh, so there's a warning here. You need an on change handler uh, for this drop down. So that's where we're going. So we're going to say on change equals evt arrow. We're going to call set sort value and evt target.value, basically the whatever value is currently selected on this control. Okay, now as I like to do, I'm just going to throw in a little like h6 right here. It's going to set my sort value variable just so that I can see that when I select oldest, newest, title, so on and so forth. Now if I refresh this, clear that out, refresh. Okay, we're getting these um, initial errors, which are fine because that's as the components are rendering, we don't you know, have the permissions initially, but, but then we load our, we load our uh, uh, credentials out of local storage, we get permissions, we get the data, we can now see that we have a state variable um, that's us working with all of the values. And every time we change this, we are changing um, what's in there. Newest is the default, so we can, we can see that that's working, so we can take that out. Now, we still, we don't have a button, right? So if I go back to the search interface, there's kind of um, a button that will allow us to essentially do another submit. And before I recorded, you know, I was showing Grant, it's like, hey, you know, if you even go to Amazon and search for basketball, you know, um, you're going to notice that some things, you know, you click and the whole page, you know, it does a, it does a post, you know, that, that's, that's going to the server, getting a whole new set of data from the database and displaying a bunch of cards, right? That's what we're looking at, a bunch of cards, right? But there's some things that you do that you don't, right? You say, hey, $10 max and $20, you know, min max and click go. It's not until 
I could type in these text boxes and no posts are happening until you click go, right? So the question becomes what events actually cause a trigger to the server to get the data in, in new order? A lot of cheap basketballs. Um, and so, you know, initially what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this up. I'm going to have like one search button and I'm going to change all sorts of information. And it's not until I click the search do I actually hit the server. That doesn't have to remain the case, but that's how I'm at least going to start this. And so I'm just going to make a button here on my front end. Um, So here's my div, there's my call, and here's a row. Maybe I'll just start another row. Um, div class name. No, wait a minute. Uh, let me let me think where I want this to go. Um, I'm just gonna put my search button over here, right? So so what I can do. Let's just make up div class name call medium four. And that's my middle column. And call medium four. And this is my last column. And this will be a button type of submit. And um We can bring in like a font awesome. And uh, React icons. PMJS, let's just look up React icons. And go to the home page. And find awesome. Right, so magnifying glass, if I go to React, trying to remember, mm, so FA magnifying hyphen glass, um, so that's your import. There, that looks like FA magnifying glass. And if this isn't right, it will let me know. Okay, declared but never used. So there's my FA magnifying glass. If I go down then to my button and I say FA magnifying glass and that's what you see inside of the button and I go back to localhost and I go to my bug list yeah that didn't work um, How about just word search for now? Button, class name, button, button, secondary. Got a button that says search. Um, and on click. Um, 
search call a function called search update passing it the evt variable so of course we need to make this function called search or we'll call it on submit search how about that on submit search so now we come back here after use effect But before our JSX, we're going to make a function called onSubmitSearch. We're going to prevent the default submit. And this is where we're going to actually use Axios. <clears throat> Something like this. So, I didn't like my FA magnifying glass. I, I can go back because I've, I've already used I've already used it on uh, these. I just have to go back and look at those and see. I gotta look at the right docs at the right place. I'm not looking at the right place for that. But if I click the search button, we're good. Okay, so here we're calling Axios on the page load and whenever auth changes. But we can call Axios again, const res equals await Axios dot um, well what is our method? Axios dot get and this is going to be an async function. So we're going to pass the same piece of information here API bugs list. Uh, but we're going to pass it a piece of data. Notice this time we had headers. which we're going to pass headers as well this time but we're also going to pass one for params so let's put this headers in as such now there's headers I'm going to put a comma I'm going to say params and you know like we learned back here with Postman if I boot up Postman uh, we're sending data across via parameters so if I if I hit this is hitting my back end API users list let me go ahead and log in my user so this is hitting again my live back end with my login Okay, so there you go. And then if I just get uh, my users list, I can see it goes Ashley, Bob, Smith. But if I sort by, notice it changes the parameters here in my URL. It's called a query string. And it starts with the question mark and then it's got the uh, parameter variable called sort by equals and then a value of family name. So I should be able to change this up. Notice Ashley is first, given name is first, and then Bob. So I'm gonna change it up to family name. And then my sort's gonna come back different. Charles Corgan, Gegelman, Gudmestead. So we just changed the sort. The default sort there was by um, first name given name versus family name. Now if I go to get all bugs, let's go back to 
um, let's minimize that and go to bugs, list all bugs. And if I just list all my bugs here, uh, it's 503. I have to update my URL to go here. Okay, so I'm getting my bugs back. And we should have a back end that allows us to sort by. And um, we said newest. So right now it says, you know, this one created on 710. Certainly not the newest bug. And if I sort by newest, Um, now I have to see if my back end is expecting it to be newest. Let me look at my back end and bug list. Let me go up to duh, 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 duh. here's my list. Um, so case of newest by default is creation date one and so newest should change my sort to creation date negative one so there should be let's kind of scroll up we extract sort by that's looking good uh, let me look at these different bugs Created on 710, created on 710, created on 710, and then created on 731. So I got four bugs. Let me just try and sort by oldest. Okay, I gotta get to work here before I get it to work on my front end. So I gotta see what I'm doing wrong on Postman. Grant, is your sort by uh, working with newest and oldest? I'm checking that. Okay. Uh, created on. Oh, it's called creation date. Um, the property here of creation date. We don't have a creation date. We have a created on property. You see that? Yeah. So I believe we need to change our sort instead of creation date. I believe if we change this to created on instead of creation date. Make sure that now at some point I think we had creation date because at some point that was working. But before I make this change I just want to see if yours is working. So what's not working here is my sort by oldest or newest doesn't change anything for me.
pause here. Wait to wait for you. Okay. Yep. So Grant is having the same issue that I'm having. So uh, I'm going to look at everywhere I have creation date inside of my list, and I'm going to refactor that to um, what is currently listed as created on. Um, and so if I kind of go back here to my bugs, I don't have a creation date. I have a created on date. So I'm just going to copy created on, go back into my back end, and look at creation date. Now there's three places there. So I'm going to say match dot create it on, create it on, create it on. And scroll down. Creation date. Create it on, 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 create it on. Okay. So I'm going to save that in two places. And I'm going to make sure, just look at it one more time. I don't see any more created creation dates on there. It's created on, created on. Okay. Now for me, I get to redeploy my back end here. Um, if you're just running on local host, you don't have to worry about that. So G cloud. And it's always worth making sure it's on that tribal flux. Yes. Okay, so uh, just before lunch here, so I redeployed my back end. So we're going to see if this is fixed or not. So let's click on send. And 710 is the first one. So that's kind of like the default. And if I sort by newest, hey, now we get 731. Uh, so now it's working in Postman. And um, great. That's a good breaking spot for lunch. OK. So we are back in recording after a lunch. And we kind of left off where we have uh, a listing of bugs that kind of gives us one order, which glancing at our back end, there is a default sort, which is created on uh, ascending order. And when you do the ascending order, it's the oldest date up so it's kind of like you're basically looking at the oldest bugs first uh, 710 at what is that 213 30 and then go if I go to the next bug 710 and well 215 it looks like 215 710 to 23. So it's got the date right. It doesn't really seem to handle the time very well. But at least looking at the date, um, then we got 731. So 710, 710, 710, 731. So it's going from oldest to newest. And if I change that to newest first, then we get the 731. So we now have the sort by working. I guess just to be a little bit more thorough, we could generate a new bug, report new bug, and um, what's our latest bug that this has had? So it's kind of a fun thing to do when you're creating a bug tracker, just actually use bugs that you have had. Um, and we have bugs. Well, um, how about the font awesome icon for the search button? 
um, doesn't work. Description when coding the font awesome icon, I need to reference the correct documentation to code the element. Steps to reproduce. Um, wing it. Basically, that's what I did. I winged it. I didn't look at any documentation. <clears throat> I thought, eh, maybe this will work. And that's never a good approach. Right? In coding, look at the documentation. But that's what I did. Create new bug. And font awesome. So this is the newest, right? So, so by default here, font awesome is the newest. And so that's our sort. Now if I click here, there you go. There's the bug that I just created. It is the newest. Uh, now we have to get this working on the front end, right? So on the front end, we have the default working of, you know, no, no sort. So by default, this is kind of how it's coming back. And wing it is my last bug wing it is my last bug. Um, now I need to be able to search and so I've started, so that's kind of where we are. I think everyone has a good idea of that. <clears throat> and this will be, uh, I have to recall, so I'm, again I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this from memory but sometimes that's not a good idea as I just demonstrated. So here's loading the bugs on the page load, right, using use effect. And here we have a params property inside of our data. In these params, uh, we're going to have a sort by property that we're sending over, just like we do here, sort by. And then the value that we're sending is our sort value. Oops, sort value. Okay, this is in our use state hook. So we provide the header and we provide, <clears throat> um, we're going to wrap this in a try block. And catch ERR, console log ERR, and if it works, console log res data. So we're going to see if we get the data to come back when we click the button that is the sorted data by the sort value. Uh, and console log that data, or we're going to catch the error. And I think my syntax is good here, but let's see what breaks. So if I kind of go back to home, bug list, we are uh, loading auth. And if I click search, aha, bingo, we get our data back. And our first element in our array of objects is the newest bug. Of course, getting the data back, what do we do next? Because we got the data back. Instead of doing a console log with that data, we can call set bugs. We're going to call set bugs with res.data. And again, I just like to go here, here, and if I search, now we see that our sort is working by the newest. 
which again, if I just if I just click search, uh, newest is the default value. So we've demonstrated that that is the default value. Now, um, I am noticing that it's it's not even updating the URL, which is fine. I I don't think um, I don't think that's necessary. Um, now, oldest, of course, we haven't coded for anything else, um, so I wouldn't expect oldest to work. Um, we are getting a status code 401. If I look at the response, uh, well, we're getting a not logged in now. Um, let me bug list. Let me clear that out again. Anything else? If I go newest, interesting kind of uh, user still logged in. If I go to local storage, I've got my auth token. Um, but I'm not getting my bugs. So let me log out, log in. Looks like I may have introduced a new bug somewhere. So there's that. If I click on search, that works. Uh, let me think about, okay, now I click on oldest. That goes back to working. Let's click title. Okay, so somewhere along the way, something got lost. Um, title C F F R <coughs> capital letters before lowercase letters. <coughs> Approve duplicate. So our sort by classification. Um, we don't have the assigned to being displayed, nor do we have the uh, well created by seven minutes ago, a day ago, twenty two. Oh no, created by, that's that's a username. So we kind of have some fields that aren't being displayed. I'm not sure where my credentials got lost. Grant, just curious, did you have that? I, I haven't seen what. You haven't what, seen that? I'll okay, no. okay. I'll keep an eye on that if that happens again. Um, <clears throat> but assigned to and created by. So I want to look at um, a lot of this is working. I just want to I just want to be sure of it, right? So I just want to be sure newest and oldest are working. Title we saw working. Classification. I do classification. A comes before D, comes before U, so classification is working. Now assign to, okay. So let's make sure that the bug is sending that to the front end. Um, in other words, if I project, I don't have a project, so I'm sending the whole bug. Like a, keep in mind, a project is saying what fields you wanna send. If you don't have a project, you send the whole bug. So I'm sending the whole bug. So I should be able to come to my front end. And here I do a set bugs. Now, um, <sighs> council.table, okay. So let's go to the bug item. And here on my return, I'm just going to console.table the bug. And you have to do that inside of like a TR. Okay. 
so I just want to look at the the bugs and all their properties on the front end. <clears throat> and so you can see there's an assigned to property. Um, we're just not we're not displaying that. So let's go ahead and put that assigned to. How about assigned to full name inside of our inside of our bug item. So here. We have a bug title, classification, um, if I go back here, created by, let's just do the last option, wait a minute, excuse me, the last TH, let's add one more TH, we'll say assigned to, so the last column will be assigned to um, before we have the so there I believe that'll bug dot assign to dot full name let's double check that that is console Okay, we're getting there, except for not. So they're all assigned to Evan Gudmasted, um, which uh, my headings are off. So let me go back here. So we got created, that's right, closed. Something's not right with my table. Table heading. Confused, obviously. Uh, let's see. Table heading. Should this not be TD? TD. Okay. So that's one thing. And uh, maybe my council, I don't think my council table is throwing something off. I'm gonna throw in a fragment here. I'm just gonna throw in a fragment. I don't think this is it. Council.table bug. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we just need one more table heading that says, you know, 
of the edit button. But for whatever reason, something isn't closed right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, oh, there is a TR there. Yeah, inside the T body, there's a TR, a bunch of TDs. Okay, so. Scope of call. This is a not that hard, but I'm confused. <clears throat> well, as you could see, I've got it working. I've got the alignment. Now, what did I do is the question. And I did notice that these badges, they weren't what I wanted anyways. Um, I took my badges off. Um... And then the last one here doesn't say close. This, this last one says edit bug. And so um, some of the alignment problems I was having, um, were apparently, I'm not sure, it, it wouldn't make sense to me that it was my badge, but that's kind of what's looking like. now. Um, okay, so I've got closed, if I edit a bug, um, I don't have the ability to close it here, and granted you need the permission to close a bug, um, but let's take the council table bug off, uh, or before we do that, let's go back to the requirements, um, and make sure that we have all the data displaying on the screen that we're going to sort by. Uh, which brings us back to newest and oldest title classification assigned to and what about reported by so that would be bug author right so bug author also has a full name so bug author, full name, assigned to, and bug author dot full name. So one more item here, assigned to, and then reported by, reported by, and this will go in the TD just before the link here. And this is bug dot bug author dot full name bug dot bug author dot full name. Okay. So very good. So if I go newest, okay. Now to be thorough in testing this, if we go oldest, good, title, good, classification, good, sign to, well, it's kind of hard to tell because, well, it's all assigned to me and created by um, and so we need to essentially let another user create a bug. And so let's see, Bob Smith at gmail.com password 
Now, let's keep an eye on the council for errors. We're going to clear out some of that. Let's go to report new bug. And Bob Smith will report a bug of uh, Just something silly. Facebook link doesn't navigate to correct URL. Description it goes to Twitter, which is now called X instead. Steps to reproduce. Click the icon in the footer. Okay. Create new bug and new bug created. Now, why are we not seeing that bug? Presumably, if I go to our back end, we have a page size of five configured in our limit. Um, so we have to change that. Um, to see more bugs and or we need to set page number to two but we're, we're not at that point where we've created the controls to do that the links to do that um, and so let's just check our database Let's click newest. Okay, well if I click newest, you can see I'm getting Bob Smith assigned to Bob Smith. Now if I go assign to, I should get Bob Smith first. I get created by. Okay, so let's log out Bob Smith. Okay, so we get there from Bob Smith. If I go to oldest, assign to, we get Bob Smith. And we are going to want to change so that when you edit a bug, if you have permissions, you can assign it to a different user. Um, eventually, right? But as I'm testing this, I'm now James Smith. I want to report a new bug. <clears throat> Twitter icon needs updating. Twitter rebranded as X. Steps to reproduce. Um, the icon in the footer needs to be replaced. Simply look at that footer. Okay, and if I search by newest, I now see my new bug from Jane Smith. And if I go to created by, Now, um, it does assign to, goes B, I would expect the next one to be J. Interestingly, when I Okay, so I want to look at both assigned to and created by. And so there's a, a good chance that our property names aren't matching up uh, like it was before. So assigned to AB, oh, J, B, E, F, okay, no, it's fine. Assigned to is fine because 
Bob, Evan, Jane. Alphabet, alphabetical order uh, is <laughs> is working. Okay, that's that's what I would expect. So our sort looks good. Uh, Grant, are you with me? Yeah, mine's good. Good to know. And so I'm going to go back into my front end and I am going to remove the council table of the bug. And log out. Okay, newest. Looks good to me. So in a continuation here of the lab, do I have the lab pulled up still? Let me just drag this over here. We have the sort by. Let's do keywords. Right, that's easy enough. Input type of keywords. Um, don't worry about the input field. Okay. So on our front end, bug list. Here is our column. I'm going to maybe take my select list and put it in the middle here. So getting some bootstrap classes on there. Okay. So now let's wire up a state for the keywords. Okay, so we got keywords, set keywords. Luckily, we've done this a whole bunch of times. We're going to say value equals keywords. And on change, set keywords. So sort by sort value, comma, keywords. Now, keywords are blank by default. 
how is that handled, right? So you don't want to send keywords if there are no keywords, right? So yeah, maybe this doesn't work the way this is coded because by default, keywords are blank. And if you send a blank string over for your keywords, uh, okay, I'm glad that didn't break. This is sorting by the newest. And now you might be wondering where's that at? Well, this one has have it goes to Twitter instead on the description. So our back end is working with keywords now. Go back to bug list. If I search for login. And there's the word login over here. Uh, there's the word login on steps to reproduce. And do we implement it in a case insensitive way? It does look like we did. We got lowercase, capital case. Um, so I don't. If I search for Twitter lowercase, we get the capital T. Let's see if we got the lowercase t. T. See here, we search for lowercase Twitter, but it responded with capital Twitter, capital Twitter. So it's case insensitive. Could you go back over your code? Sure. I, I so I implemented. So in my params, I provided the sort value, sort value, keywords, keywords. Keywords is a hook. Okay. And I wired that up on a text box here. Okay, I think. I think I've got that. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. So we got uh, Grant squ squared away, and in that, um, if I just would have looked at my other code, it, all the fun, awesome icons start with capital F A, and then if you just start typing, you could see F A search, F A search dollar. These are the icons that you, you're getting in IntelliSense. And so FA search is kind of what I was looking for. And that allows me to go down to my button and replace that with FA search. And we get that little search button. Now we can edit this bug and that's approved. Uh, obviously, I need to be able to close it, right? So it's approved. I can edit the bug, uh, but we need to be able to additionally to close the bug. And so there are certain things that we're doing in this lab, you know. Uh, other things are just what I would call cleanup tasks that are well within our capabilities of doing now. Um, searching. I'm just looking at the spacing here. Um, because this button doesn't have a label. So I'm going to add a label for that button and see if I can't bump it down. Okay, and now it's at least in line. Um, okay, clicking the label clicks the button.
cool, cool, cool. Keywords. Now classification, use a select field to pick a single classification. If a user does not select a classification, then all classification must be displayed. All right, that's my back end. So let's have another. So here we can change our columns down to three, three, and three. Column three, column three, column three. And let's, therefore, we can have one more. Now we have four columns with a select list for classification. I'm just going to copy and paste that. And ID selection on classification. I don't have a value yet, so I'm going to take that out. And I don't have an on change. So I'm going to delete those for now. I'll re add those. So we have a classification. Now what are the values of classification? Let's look at our back end. That's probably the best way, the quickest way to look at this. Bug. Classification can be approved, unclassified, duplicate, or unapproved. So let's bring these in to approved, approved. Those are our four options. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, we need a label, but it's showing those. Uh, sort by classification. So we need a label that says classification, select a classification label. First option is empty. So this will be empty. And this will be select I'll, I'll even say filter by classification. And the default option is here or actually no we'll just kind of leave that empty kind of want to bring in state for that so filter by classification Okay, 
let's bring in a hook for classification. Classification filter set classification filter equals use state empty. And here on the select control, we'll set the value to classification filter on change EVT set classification filter EVT target value okay and I'm just going to as I always do filter by classification little red text instead of a span with my classification filter so get it to stand out uh, okay proved empty approved unclassified duplicate unapproved Okay, and so looking good there. We can get rid of the span. Now let's look at our back end here and let's go to our list route. We do have a classification where if there's a classification then we set the match equal to the classification and so that's only if it's truthy so let's go ahead and send classification over so params comma classification colon and we send over the classification filter. Now if we were consistent, we would call this the classification value. But let's say that. So that should, when we click the button, send over the classification. If it's truthy, then it should apply it which should allow me to kind of come back here and if I just go here and I leave that select a classification and I filter by newest it still brings up Jane Smith and Bob Smith with unclassified and approved and so on and so forth but if I change that to approved got it unclassified duplicate unapproved now probably um, in the event of no bugs we want to show we want to show a message saying no bugs match this criteria so let me go back to bug list and kind of down here We could say bugs and so if there's bugs, then you map the bugs. Maybe we don't need that extra. So if there's bugs, then you map the bugs.
Make sure I just didn't break anything. Okay. Um, and what as we say, not bugs. Not bugs. And let's have a TR. doesn't need to be a TR, I'm just a H1. No bugs match this criteria, something like that. And so bring that back, and if I go to unapproved, Inspect Council Bug List. Okay, unapproved. Now, I'm not getting any errors in my council, so I'm wondering if it's just returning an empty object and that's, therefore, there is an, there is an empty thing there, which is probably what's happening. Um, so let me go back and troubleshoot this just a little bit more on my bug list. Um, Console log res data. So if I go back to unapproved, yeah, it's an empty array. So we can just modify this if statement on the bug lists. Uh, bugs dot bugs length is zero because it's being set to an empty array. H1 it doesn't like that I got an H1 inside of a T body, which is cool with me. Let's just do tr t whoop. Close the tr td. Close the td. So if the bug's length is zero, then we display something like that. Okay, unapproved. No bugs match this criteria. So let's get rid of that council log. Which was where? Right here. Not interested in that council log.
All right, so the next uh, things to filter by are max age, like, and min age. So anywhere from one day to five days old, something like that. We want we want to see bugs that are with only within one to five days old. And so min age and max age. And so let's go to our list. And I'm thinking we, we're about due for a new row. Um, so in our controls, I add a div class name call medium three. I should put the search on its own row. Now let's go ahead and hard code that in. And on this one, Now, type in the word label and hit tab, and you get some quick controls there. Uh, label for input and input colon number is what this wants me to do. Input type of number. We'll call this text min age. ID text min age text min age I'll just glance at this class name form hyphen control class name form hyphen label and in here let's copy and paste Max, max, max. So there's also, I'm going to just tell Bootstrap to figure it out. So you just do call, 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 call. So here's my row. And if you just say a bunch of calls, eh, save it. Um, probably going to undo this, but now I'll cut that. Just trying div class name call and paste. So that just gets one, two, three, four, five. Cannot read properties of null regarding length. Ah, I did introduce a problem. Bug list cannot read properties of length. Um,
just going to comment that out for now. Come back to that. So these are number fields. Send that over min age and max age. Min age colon min age comma max age colon max age. Make sure that's what we're expecting on the back end. Max age and min age. And let's make sure it didn't break yet. So we leave that empty. And we are filtering by the newest. Okay. And let's wire up these labels with the span in them. Let's say max age. Span in them that says min age. And here, of course, we need to on change. Okay, got a min and max, and one and five. One and one hundred. So if I say one and thirty, we're good. If I say one and twenty, nothing. So interestingly enough, our new bugs are not being shown here. It does look like our old bugs there 22 days ago. That looks good. But between one and five, we're not getting any. So let's trace that problem. They're less than a day old. Okay, so the zero is a day ago. So I guess they're not quite. So. Yeah, the minimum age is creating the problem. So an hour ago, so that's those. Oh, a day ago, maybe it's not quite 24 hours. Maybe that's, maybe that's it. It's working by days, but I just have so many bugs that are created roughly a day ago. I think that might be rounding kind of thing. So. Yeah, I think I think we're okay here. 
Um, and if we just say between zero and five days, Yeah, these these ones were created so recently, an hour ago, a day ago. Again, this is this is that moment library that's kind of giving us the text language on here, whether it's actually 24 hours ago, which would be one day old. You know, this is rounding, I think, to one day old, um, but it's not maybe not a full 24 hours old. Maybe, maybe not. But it is working how we coded it. Um, so that appears to be working except for a couple of weird situations that are one-offs. Um, let's get rid of the span there. Min and max age. What's left? Open, it's a checkbox, and closed. We battled this quite a bit just working on the back end, didn't we? Remember that? Yeah. Um, let's look at what we did on the back end. And so we just, we changed it to only have a closed. And if close is true, then we set the match dot closed. So we kind of changed that. So I'm just going to say, doesn't make sense to have really both. We just need closed. And right now, None of our bugs are closed, I don't think. I think all of our bugs closed as false. So let's add a checkbox for closed on our front end. problem with this is as we put everything all in one row and I inspect using my mobile tool eh. I don't know you kind of lose some of the control there of how it responds as the viewport gets more narrow so I don't love using the just let bootstrap figure it out approach, but that's okay. So let's type in the word input and hit tab. Uh, okay, input colon checkbox tab, label tab, chk closed, CHK closed, CHK closed. Let's go to get bootstrap and look at checkboxes, checks and radios. And so we have a class of foreign check on the div. And then you have a label. So the class is form check input and the parent div has the class of form check. So here on the parent call class is form check and then the input is form check input class name form check input and then the label form check label Okay. Get out of that. 
Oh, we're getting a, a, some weird hybrid of styling here where our checkboxes want to have some weird X. Um, that's funny. Checkbox, check, boot swatch. So we're getting that content X over the top goofy thing. Um, so let's have a closed, set closed, and probably boolean false. And then back down here on my params, I'll do closed, closed. And down here, on change, EVT, set. Set closed. All right. Hopefully that's just going to say true or false. On. Okay. So bug list. Okay. So it's not what I wanted to do. Oh, it's not the value, it's the checked EVT target checked property that's right so let's bring that back might need to, at that point it's boolean, we might need to to string it. Closed to string. Because that's a boolean value. We need to get that to show up in my label. Now true, false, true, false. There we go. Cool. So two string got it in there, but it is a Boolean value that is being stored in our hook called closed. So it should send over true or false to our database. Now we don't have the interface to close a bug. So let's go over here go to Mongo and just manually close one. Or, uh, right now, what, they're all open, I think. We gotta get one closed. I think that's the idea. So let's go to my data bugs, running slow, okay, front end not implementing authorization. We have fixed this. So this is a boolean true, 
closed is true. Closed is true. So now, localhost, bug list, we have closed of true. And that would be closed of true. If we click filter, we get our one closed of true. Filter here. All of these are closed false. Looking good. So that handles close, we handled sort by, and that is a wrap on the search interface for bugs. Now, um, that's the lab. However, I will say um, one thing to work on moving forward is we don't have paging controls. And so, you know, we have more bugs here, but we're only seeing five bugs because our backend's only sending us five bugs. That's how we have our backend configured. Um, and so you, you, you bring in buttons at the bottom of the page to go from one page to the next. And that is something to consider working on in the future. However, if we're just following these labs right now, we have implemented a search interface for bugs. Um, and so probably tomorrow, uh, Grant, like we've done in the past, you know, I'll probably have you spin up these here and ask questions and uh, as far as the search interface for users. And that's how, okay. we'll, that's how we'll start the class tomorrow and that'll kind of get you going and then we'll review your code and, and then may, uh, go from there. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, is your search interface for your bug list, is that up and running? Yes. Awesome, man. All right. Thanks, man. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. See you tomorrow. All right. Have a good day. Bye. You too.